Welcome to the Smithsonian's National Museum of the American Indian. My name is Kevin Gover. It's my great good fortune to be the director of the museum. We appreciate you all uh, uh, coming this afternoon to discuss this important matter. Um, you, you may or may not know that uh, this museum was established in 1989. And as part of our authorizing legislation, um, as enacted by the Congress, we were directed, the Smithsonian uh, was directed to return uh, to the Native Nations of the United States uh, certain items that were within our collections. That included human remains, it included um, cultural patrimony, and it included sacred objects. And so the position of the United States on this matter is well established. Uh, a few months later, uh, all museums in the United States that uh, received any federal funding were also required to repatriate uh, items like those that I just described. Uh, unfortunately, of course, um, the reach of the laws of the United States uh, ends at the borders. And um, in uh, other parts of the world, uh, these materials, which were collected over a very long and unfortunate period of time, uh, remain in the possession not only of institutions in other countries, but in the hands of private individuals. And there even exists a market, a private market, uh, in these goods. And that's the, that's the issue that we're here to discuss today. Um, we're going to hear first uh, from Congressman Steve Pierce. Uh, he is, uh, represents the 2nd District from the state of New Mexico. Please welcome Congressman Pierce. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, we appreciate it. Uh, anytime you go about legislation, you should try to really get the big picture underneath you and underneath us. And Native Americans, non-Native Americans, all of us in the U.S. have a common history. Now, that's especially true in the Southwest and in New Mexico, where the cultures are, are just wrapped together. And that's the way it should be. So when uh, we find that culturally sensitive items are being auctioned for sale, then we all say, why? Uh, and so what uh, our office did is prepare a resolution, uh, House Concurrent Resolution 122, which we say that uh, should not be trafficking in the tribal cultural sensitive items. Uh, the French have an auction that's going to be going on uh, the May the 30th of this year, and they have not been so responsive to our request that they take a very close look at this. Uh, we had experience back in 2013, again in Paris, an auction house sold some items. We were not able, Laguna is in my district, I had bought one of the items and was trying to get it back. Uh, there were problems we, we got with the State Department. The State Department uh, was, was very, very effective, and, and eventually that came back. Now, Sotheby's uh, got engaged at that point and had indicated a knowledge and an interest in maybe just going to all the collectors, a very limited number worldwide, but that action kind of stalled out. They felt like that we could just go to people and appeal to their, their sensibilities and, and stop that. Um, we think that that's still possible, but in the meantime, we're uh, pushing forward on this legislation, HCON Res 122, and, and so it's asking the State Department, the Attorney General, the Department of Interior, Department of Commerce, and Homeland Security, just to cooperate together to see that, that we give this as much attention and as much uh, attention to the Native American uh, community as, as possible in the consultation. Now, we'll tell you that, that we've had tremendous help from the State Department, from the U.S. Embassy in Paris, from the BIA, and from the Smithsonian. Uh, it's uh, actually been very overwhelming, the support that we've got in this country. Now, we've got, uh, again, Kevin has been very effective working from here. Brenda Toantita, the Pipe Stem Eastern Band of the Cherokee. Uh, she's the chair of the Board of the Trustees. Uh, they both uh, have been uh, totally on board. Acoma Pueblo in New Mexico in our district. Kurt Riley, governor, uh, and Conroy Chino are here today. The, he's a traditional leader, Conroy Chino is. Uh, the Hoopa Tribal Nation from California, Bradley Marshall, uh, the Hoopa Tribal Council, and Liarani Pole, uh, Hoopa the Tribal Council. The U.S. Department of State, 
Mark Taplin, the Principal Deputy uh, Assistant Secretary of Bureau of Education and Cultural Affairs, has been extremely in, in, uh, important in the entire uh, process. Bureau of Indian Affairs, Lawrence Roberts, Acting Assistant Secretary of Indian Affairs, again, very helpful. Bureau of Land Management, Emily Pallas, the Acting Division Chief, uh, cultural, paleontological uh, resources and tribal consultation, National Park Service, Melanie O'Brien, the program manager, uh, Native, uh, National Native uh, Graves Protection and Repatriation Act. The National Council Congress of American Indians have uh, been very effective, and the National Association of Tribal Historic Preservation Officers, the uh, NAFPO, have been uh, all engaged. So this is really a very large effort that is coalescing to simply say that we can do better in the world and we can do better in this country. Uh, so I really appreciate, Kevin, the opportunity to come here and, and kind of lay out the background of, of this bill and then to talk about uh, moving forward. Uh, but uh, with that, I would uh, give the time back to Kevin. Thank you again. Appreciate you all being here. Thank you, Congressman, and we really appreciate uh, the leadership you're showing um, in our Congress. Um, we would now like to turn to representatives of Native American nations who are here, uh, whose, um, whose uh, um, beliefs and their, their patrimony are at stake in this auction that will be taking place on the 30th. And so to start us off uh, in a good way, I'd like to call upon Bradley Marshall and Leilani Pohl of the Hoopa Valley Tribal Council. Good afternoon. Um, so for our culture, we generally start everything with a prayer. A uh, prayer for healing of the world, a prayer for helping bring objects home. And for us, a prayer is through song and burning of uh, uh, It's um, We always call it Indian root. It's a, I guess it's a universal root around the, all tribes through the United States. So I'll go ahead and sing a song and and Leilani's brain. to help bring the, the family members that we have spread throughout the world home. So thank you. Thank you. I'd like next to call upon uh, Governor Kurt Riley of the Pueblo of Acoma and Conroy Chino, a traditional leader of the Pueblo of Acoma. Governor. Kuatsi hopa, kai hopa tawatsi, shtrayash apa kuhima tsi, shkawish, kayush, kayush tims, etimo hawetsi tawatsi, tai shroyash, tu hina me stesh, ahats aya osha chano stesh, wai kashai tapu puchin, tsis iwitsui ta nid. Good afternoon, my name is Kurt Riley, governor of the Pueblo of Acoma, which is located in New Mexico. I come today on behalf of my people to talk about the Ill illegal theft, sale, and trafficking of our sacred and cultural items. I'm joined today by one of my traditional leader leaders, Mr. Conroy Chino. The whole world condemns the destruction of the Palmera by ISIS. The National Geographic's cover story this month is about tomb raiders looting the world's ancient tre treasures. Just as these things are happening, Worldwide, they are also happening in the United States with regard to the plundering of native cultures. Akama has thrived for thousands of years because of our culture and our traditional beliefs. Our spiritual practices involve many elements, including prayer, pilgrimages, and the use of very sacred and meaningful objects, including the Akama shield, 
which is due to be auctioned to the highest bidder in Paris this coming Monday. The Akama shield is a sacred item that no individual can own. It is not made for commercial use or intended to be created as an of artistic value. Rather, the item was created to be used in specific Akama ceremonies for the benefit of our community. Under Pueblo of Akama law, this item would have been cared for by its caretaker with an absolute ban on its sale or transfer outside of the Pueblo. How it left the Pueblo, we don't know. However, it is, its mere existence and presence outside of the Pueblo tells us that an event occurred that violated Pueblo of Acoma law. For this reason, I call upon the Eve Auction House to immediately cease the sale of the Acoma Shield and all other items of cultural patrimony. I implore the Republic of France to take immediate forceful action to prevent this deplorable action. This problem is not limited to France. In the past year for uh, the Acoma Pueblo alone, there were 10 incidences in the United States involving at least 24 items of cultural patrimony. Without active federal support and enforcement, a black market in these cultural items has emerged in the United States. Items acquired in the United States are exported to nations such as France that allow these sales to go forward. We demand that the Eve Auction Company and other auction houses, galleries, collectors, and art dealers in the United States immediately cease the sale of Akama cultural patrimony and sacred items. If the auctioneers and sellers will not stop voluntarily, we call upon France and other nations, including the United States, to forcibly act to end these destructive, insidious, and Ill illegal markets. We are thankful that the Congress is now looking at this issue. In particular, New Mexico Congressman Steve Pierce, who has introduced the House Concurrent Resolution 122, condemning the trafficking and sale of these items. He has been very successful in adding co-sponsors, and we are optimistic about a congressional hearing on this topic. We are also working with the whole New Mexico congressional delegation including Senator Heinrich, Senator Udall, Congressman Lujan, and Congresswoman Lujan Grisham on amendments to the NAGPRA to strengthen the law in this area. We are also very appreciative of the support offered by the Department of the Interior, Secretary Jewell, Department of State, Secretary Kerry, and the Department of Justice, Attorney General Loretta Lynch. Finally, we are appealing to the people of France and to the French authorities to honor our humanity and the value of our ancient traditional beliefs by stopping this sale and returning this item. Thank you all for coming to learn about this issue. Both Mr. Chino and I are available to discuss this with you in more detail. I just want to <clears throat> I just want to thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak on behalf of my people. As you can tell when these items leave our pebble this is <laughs> this is how much it hurts. For, for a person in my position to speak and express my emotion this way is maybe in, in some eyes not a role model for males, but this is how much it hurts my people when we see these cultural items put on the internet or go up for sale. But I thank you very much for giving me the, me the opportunity to speak on behalf of my people.
Thank you so much, Governor. I'd like to call next upon uh, Bradley Marshall and Leilani Pohl of the Hoopa Valley Tribal Council. Hey, Young. Hey, Young. So I think it's important to talk about some of the history that we've gone through as tribes. The Hoopa Valley Reservation, we are proud members of the council, proud to be able to attend this meeting. It was a very short notice, but we felt it was important to do our best to get here. So we literally left a council meeting uh, at maybe three o'clock yesterday afternoon in Northern California, up in the Redwoods, hopped a red eye and came in this morning to discuss this issue because it is of the utmost importance to us. The history of our tribe, as long as everyone else's history, for us, we had first contact about 150 years ago in Northern California. We were fortunate in that our location was a very rugged terrain, so we didn't have the onset of settlers coming into our area early on. But nevertheless, it did happen to us. 150 years ago, the gold rush started hitting within California, and that's when the devastation started really taking place for our community, our people. Through that time period, it became illegal for Indians to have their land. It was illegal for us to practice our ceremonies. It was illegal for us to speak our cultures. There was a separation from the child from the bad influence, which was the parent. We went through these atrocities all through our beginning with the United States and our history. Through that time period, our sacred objects began to leave our community, began to leave our, our home, our valley. And that was due to the desire from the non-native people to strip us from our culture, strip us from our religious, strip us from who we are as a people. And so we have stories within our community of these objects leaving by the wagon loads. Destined for museums all through the United States, destined through to museums throughout the country and to uh, various astute private collectors at that time period. Over the years, we've searched high and low for objects that are part of our community. When these objects have been created for ceremony use within our community, a spirit goes into them. When we create the objects, we're in prayer. We're breathing life into the object. And so these objects are not just a, a, a mere object in, in some fancy collection. These objects are living beings to us. These objects are part of our family. These objects are part of who we are as a people. These objects have a sacred purpose within our community. At the auction coming up on, on Monday is one of these objects. We're hopeful that somewhere, someday, that that member of our community, that member of our family, will be able to return home to us and continue its life span within our community. The auctions that take place around the world are deplorable, as you heard. It, harkens to me of the slave auctions that took place so long ago that we thought we were past because these are truly members of our community, members of who we are, members of our family. These are members of our family and our community that were never meant to leave, never meant to go as far as they have around the world. These objects do need to come back because they are part of our, our living body. They are a member of our tribe. They are a member of our community and they are alive. So <clears throat> with that, I ask that the auction be stopped. I ask that we really start working towards international repatriation so we have the ability to bring these objects back to our communities, back to where they were meant to be. When we look at our culture, there's three main hubs in the world that a lot of the stuff that came from our area had gone to. The time period that it left represents a devastation for us as Native people. It represents a taking of our culture our community, our family from us, a stripping of who we are. It's time to stop that. It's time to bring that home and finish that circle so it completes who we are and allows us to complete our lives as they should be in harmony with the world around us. Thank you. Our next speaker will be uh, Jackson Brossi. He is the executive director of the Navajo Nation Washington office and represents the Navajo Nation. Yat eh, Dineshik eh, Do Bitsinish Kliji, Shik eh, Kawatsi. 
I appreciate this gathering under the looming backdrop of the sale of Native American patrimony. I appreciate the uh, State Department and the Department of Interior for their support on this, as well as the National Museum of American Indian for hosting this very important meeting to shed light on something that is very important, very grave to the Navajo people. The Navajo people is all too, all too familiar and unfortunately has dealt with this type of situation several times in the past. We stand united with the tribes in urging the French auction houses and French authorities to do what is right. These are living, breathing objects. They belong in their homeland. These are irreplaceable and must be returned now. We pray that the French authorities look beyond a short-term profit, respect American laws, and do what is right in the eyes of humanity and pr stop this auction now. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> he must be real way taller than me. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jackson. I just have to add in listening to um, what the representatives of the tribes just said that uh, it adds insult to injury that this sort of sale would take place on our Memorial Day because it is a virtual certainty that citizens of these three tribes fought in Europe in World War I and World War II. It's almost a certainty that they gave their lives there. And um, like I said, that just adds insult to injury. So let me next call upon where uh, we thank the tribal leaders for, for their statements. We'd now like to turn to some, uh, some other speakers, uh, beginning with Mark Taplin, the Principal Deputy Assistant Secretary of the United States, United States Department of State's Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs. Thank you very much uh, for the invitation to take part in this event uh, with uh, so many representatives from the Native American community. I think it's a, a really important show of solidarity uh, for the community, for its many supporters here in the United States uh, with the latest in this unfortunate series of auctions scheduled to take place next week in Paris. Uh, you know, our perspective at the State Department is, is the same as for many of the rest of you, that objects uh, for sale, in this case, once again, are vitally important to tribal identity. And our perspective has always been, and we've spoken to this point on numerous occasions, that in the absence of clear documentation and the consent of the tribes themselves, these objects simply shouldn't be sold. This type of commercialization of Native American cultural property is fundamentally wrong. Uh, it shouldn't be viewed as a mere commercial or business transaction. Now, let me just say, we have a very close partnership with France. France is, after all, our oldest ally. Uh, and we work together with our French friends on very many fronts. But um, this is obviously a bit of an exception. And we, along with our colleagues at the Department of Interior, have been engaged with the French government at various levels uh, since the uh, auctions began in 2013. And our embassy in Paris in particular has been very active on this front. We've made a number of proposals uh, in diplomatic channels for ways that our two governments can work together to try to address this challenge in a, in a positive fashion. Uh, but I must say we're still awaiting a response um, from the French side. So uh, in the absence, uh, in as we wait for uh, a response, I, we just want to underline again that this issue continues to cause dismay in the United States, and it causes dismay among tribes, non-governmental organizations, uh, specialists, 
members of Congress, thank you, Congressman, so much for your leadership on this count, and frankly, among all of us uh, who care about protecting and preserving America's unique uh, cultural heritage. So thank you again for this invitation, um, and thank you for uh, organizing this event today. Next, I'll call upon Lawrence Roberts, who is the Acting Assistant Secretary for Indian Affairs in the United States Department of the Interior. Thank you, and I want to start off by uh, thanking Director Gover and the National Museum of American Indians for hosting this event this afternoon. Um, unfortunately, in uh, my position, too often tribes are coming to us talking about um, international repatriation. It's, it's an issue that has um, gone on far too long and it is something that we are working diligently with State Department and our other colleagues to address. Um, I want to say that the Pueblo of Acoma and the leadership of Acoma has uh, strong support from both my office and from Secretary Jewell and we stand with the Acoma Pueblo and asking the Eve Auction House to stop the, the, the sale um, uh, on Monday. And we are going to continue to stand with all tribes on this issue uh, in the future. Um, Secretary Jewell, as many of you know, has dialogued directly with France on this issue in December, and we are going to continue uh, that dialogue through the State Department and work extraordinarily closely with State Department and tribes on this issue. We will also, we have had a number of uh, sessions with tribes and um, others at the UN on this issue and we will continue uh, to dialogue and support tribes as much as we can on this issue. So we look very, um, we look forward to working closely with Congress, very heartened by the Congressman's leadership uh, on this issue. Um, hope that Congress does have a hearing on this issue in the very near future. Uh, because it's a problem that has gone on for far too long and uh, we are going to work with tribes, the Congress and others uh, to address this issue for both not only current generations but future generations as well. So thank you. Our next speaker is uh, Brenda Toynita Pipestem who is the chair of the National Museum of the American Indians Board of Trustees. Thank you, Kevin. I want to begin by saying thank you for lending your time in support of this very important issue that we all hold very near and dear to our hearts. I am Brenda Tornita Pipestem, a citizen of the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians from North Carolina, and I serve as the chair of the Board of Trustees of the Smithsonian Institution's National Museum of the American Indian. On behalf of the Board of Trustees of the National Museum of the American Indian, we call on the international community to join us in condemning the auction sale of American Indian sacred objects and objects of cultural patrimony. We also call on the holders of the disputed objects to work with the tribal nations to repatriate these items of cultural importance. The NMAI Board of Trustees has been vested with the decision-making authority regarding the repatriation of human remains, funerary objects, sacred objects, and objects of cultural patrimony back to their communities of origin. We believe that repatriation of human remains and these cultural items is core to the recognition of human rights of indigenous peoples and the sovereign rights of their nations. Therefore, we diligently work hand in hand with tribal nations to understand the collection in our care. And we ask the international arts community to do the same. Unfortunately, through wrongful separation, the items identified as sacred objects and cultural patrimony by the Acoma Pueblo and the Hoopa Valley tribe have made their way outside their cultural homes and are now on the auction block. We recognize that it is a hard concept for some that not everything has a price tag, but we respectfully encourage you, the holders, to look beyond your cultural beliefs and experiences to consider an indigenous perspective that attaches non-commercial value to community-owned materials. These community-owned items are not just beautiful works of art. They embody the unique experiences and carry the history and ceremonies 
that are an integral part of a tribal nation's identity. The wrongful separation of these community-held items has created a void that is profound in the history and culture of indigenous peoples. To the holders of the items in dispute, unfortunately, these materials that you want to auction were never meant for market, and they were never yours to own. Please join us in setting a new standard for the private sector's treatment of indigenous peoples, sacred objects, and cultural patrimony. Ski, thank you. Uh, next, we call upon Brian Howard, who's representing the National Congress of American Indians. That is the oldest and largest national organization of Indian nations and Indian people in the United States. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Brian Howard. I'm a legislative associate of the National Congress of American Indians. Um, Akmar Adam, Thana Adam, and Pipash from the Gila River Indian Community of Arizona. Uh, I wanted to extend, on behalf of NCAI, our gratitude and appreciation for uh, the National Museum of the American Indian hosting this event today. And I also want to um, thank all of the speakers that are here today to discuss this very important issue. Uh, the National Congress of American Indians is the largest, oldest, and most representative organization of uh, American Indian and Alaska Native tribal governments in the United States. We were founded in 1944 uh, in response to federal policies that were aimed at uh, assimilation and termination of the federal trust relationship with tribal nations. Uh, part of NCAI's core principles have been focused on not only protecting tribal sovereignty, but also educating the general public about issues facing tribal nations uh, then and now. Um, and the issues that have persisted around uh, the auctions, illegal theft and taking of items of cultural patrimony, uh, funerary objects, and sacred objects uh, has been one issue that NCAI has been focused on uh, pretty much since its inception. Uh, you know, a lot of, um, based on the history of interaction with tribal nations in this country, the general public believed that tribes and tribal peoples were going to become extinct. Uh, I believe that that led to a lot of our cultural items uh, being taken without our knowledge or being taken uh, without our permission. Um, you know, with these uh, auctions that are um, unfortunately continuing through today, um, you know, not only does it uh, disparage and disrespect the sacredness and religious value of those, those objects, but it also uh, disrespects um, an entire tenet of religious protocols that went into the gathering of the items. Uh, the collection of those items and assembling of those objects for specific religious and cultural purposes. Um, so we stand with our tribal leadership, support them, and I uh, want to also echo our thanks to Congressman Pierce for introducing um, some legislation that, again, will hopefully raise light on this issue and hopefully um, lead to continued dialogue and action to bring our sacred items and sacred objects home. Thank you, Mavasapa. Thank you, Brian. I'll call next upon Kimberly Dutcher, the Executive Director of the Association on American Indian Affairs. Good afternoon, Yate. My name is Kimberly Dutcher. I'm the Executive Director of the Association on American Indian Affairs, which is a 94-year-old Indian advocacy organization and for which international repatriation has been a priority issue. We initiated the International Repatriation Project and we are committed, a full-time office and staff, to address this important human rights issue. The AAIA supports indigenous peoples in their objections to the sale of indigenous ancestors, funerary objects, sacred objects, and cultural patrimony, col collectively and often referred to as cultural items. 
under Articles 11 and 12 of the United Nations Declarations on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, international repatriation is a human rights issue. Cultural items have been taken from Native Americans through inhumane acts of digging up their graves and violating their sacred places. It is an endemic and worldwide human rights abuse and involves, in large part, the private art market. Too often, collectors and buyers purchase cultural items that have been falsely identified and improperly labeled by those who claim to be experts. Many times, cultural items have been taken from our burial and sacred locations under suspicious and even illegal circumstances. These so-called experts may have visited our communities, but are not substitutes for the indigenous peoples and their tribal governments and members' knowledge. Abuse of our indigenous cultures, beliefs, and peoples must end. Our Native American ancestors and cultural items are not placed in circumstances of profound disrespect when they must come home with their people who have a duty of care to protect them. The AAIA, therefore, urges the following to begin to address this vast human rights problem. The AAIA encourages the United States and other nations to have meaningful consultation with indigenous peoples and governments. Meaningful consultation provides time for much needed, in-depth information, exchange, and action. Our tribal governments, repatriation representatives, and indigenous spiritual leaders should play key roles in all repatriation discussions. The AAIA urges collectors and buyers to consult with indigenous peoples and our tribal governments who are the real experts and have the knowledge as well as the generational experience of their lives and culture. The AAIA also supports direct government-to-government -government communications at the United Nations among tribal governments, nation states, and United Nations officials. The AAIA requests a nationwide investigation into the looting industry and the questionable practices of private auction houses and museums that have brought us to this point. The AAIA looks forward to facilitating discussion among all interested parties at its second Indigenous International Repatriation Conference, titled Shifting the Burden, on September 26 and 28, 2016 in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Be vigilant. Remember, Indigenous people are the experts of our own cultures. Thank you. Aha. Our final speaker is D. Bambi Kraus, the president of the National Association for Tribal Historic Preservation Officers. Thank you very much, Director Gober, and thank you to the Department of State and the uh, representatives from the Department of the Interior. And uh, we really appreciate your leadership and your joining Native people in trying to stop this incredible travesty of what's been going on overseas. Uh, at the National Association of Tribal Historic Preservation Officers, there are 167 re federally recognized uh, sovereign nations that have been working to preserve and protect and rejuvenate their cultures throughout the country, from Florida to Alaska and from Maine down to California. Many of them have been uh, reviewing the auction listings as they've been going out for the past three years, and they had really wanted to be here today. They, they send me these heartbreaking messages that they're seeing things they, had didn't, they didn't even know existed that are now being sold overseas, and they were hoping to be here today, but unfortunately they were unable to. I want to echo all the other prior comments. Uh, how do you say, in so many different ways, how much this hurts Native people to see some of your most sacred objects that may mean nothing to another person other than the sheer beauty of it, but what it means to a living culture to have a living piece of that community taken away and sold to the highest bidder. How do you say it's hurting us? We want you to stop hurting us. I don't know how else to say that. And I can really appreciate Governor Riley's comments because that's how I feel when I see these things. Uh, I'm Clinkett from, my mom is from Southeast Alaska. And uh, you know, it, it's amazing what's left our communities. But I'm encouraged by how much people are invested in trying to bring it back, trying to repatriate. 
So I'm really encouraged by some of the recent activity. Specifically, I want to call for uh, the French authorities, in particular, Le Conseil des Ventes, which is the board responsible for the overseas auctions in Paris, to stop the sale of Lot 206. And that sale is, as they described it, a jacket, a warrior jacket of scalps. In our world, if that's human remains, you cannot sell human remains. It's just not the thing to do. And so we're calling on the, the authority that regulates this type of activity overseas to please stop the sale of Lot 206. On our legislative efforts, it's gratifying to see Congressman Pierce here. We really appreciate his work. Uh, but having a stronger uh, U.S. export restrictions would really help our cause also. And with, with that, I'd like to conclude my remarks and just say how gratified I am to see everybody here today, and I really appreciate everybody's efforts. Thank you. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our presentation this afternoon. We invite the media to uh, um, talk with uh, the people who have presented this afternoon. I want to offer special thanks again to Congressman Pierce uh, for being here today. And thank all of you for coming. Thank all of our presenters uh, for coming on very short notice uh, because, uh, as you see, for, for them and for us, this is an emergency situation. So thank you for being here.